Sambo and Jiu Jitsu. Two wildly different martial arts that for some reason get compared to each other an extreme amount. Now sure, these two grappling arts have some things in common, but they have a lot more differences than you may think. From their history, to the way the sport is practiced, their techniques, the strengths and the weaknesses, and even how they've done in real life competitions. We're gonna get to the bottom of this and look at both martial arts to see which one is better and why. But before we can dive into comparing these two, we first need to understand where they come from. Now quite a few people already understand the history of Jiu Jitsu. It's called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because it was popularized by the Gracie family from Brazil. Originally it came over from Japan and the Gracies took a lot of Judo aspects as well as the Jiu Jitsu aspects and formed it into their own art. Their goal is to focus more on ground fighting and submissions while using leverage at the same time. So even when they were the smaller opponent, they'd still be able to win in battles. Thanks to Hoist Gracie fighting the UFC, it became widely popular all over the world and is the sport we all practice today. Sambo, on the other hand, is a Russian martial art developed by the Soviet Red Army in the 1920s. The style is designed to be a synthesis of various grappling martial arts including judo and traditional Russian folk wrestling. It's since evolved into a popular sport all on its own, with its own techniques and even strikes. Some of the notable athletes that practiced Sambo and transitioned to MMA were Fedor, Khabib, and Islam Makhachev. Now despite both arts having different origins and being developed on opposite sides of the world, they also share quite a few similarities. Both styles focus heavily on ground fighting and submissions with an emphasis on technique and leverage rather than brute strength, though you'd never know that if you were rolling with a white belt. And both styles have a strong emphasis on sparring and competition, with practitioners regularly testing their skills against each other every day in rolling. And while it's true that submissions are practiced in Sambo, there are still differences between the two with their techniques. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu places more emphasis on submissions and positional control with less emphasis on throws and takedowns, as if that wasn't obvious from all the guard pullers you see today. Sambo on the other hand likes to practice on their throws, takedowns, and involve strikes depending on which form of Sambo you're practicing. Sambo also likes the wide range of submissions such as allowing leg locks and neck cranks, which you will see in Jiu Jitsu, but depending on the competition, they might not be legal at all. It is important to mention, however, that striking isn't allowed in all Sambo. You have combat sambo and sport sambo. So depending on which one you choose, you'll be seeing different techniques between the two. And as if it wasn't obvious enough, the outfit is different between the two sports as well. In Jiu Jitsu, you can either have gi or no gi. And in sambo, you have a gi top with shorts, shoes, and sometimes gloves. Keeping the gi top in both sports allows for a wider range of takedowns as we're able to use judo throws. Now believe it or not, but both sports are taught in a pretty similar fashion. You'll go into class with some old man warmups, drill certain moves, and then you can try sparring. The difference is that Jiu Jitsu is far less explosive when it comes to the training. Jiu Jitsu prefers to focus on the small points as using leverage, pressure, advancing past guards, and pinning an opponent down to then set up the submission. And because there aren't strikes, it's a lot easier to stay on bottom and to go for sweeps. Now while Sambo has the same emphasis on drilling and sparring while practicing new techniques, you should think about it more like wrestling. It is a much greater emphasis on throws and takedowns, looking for submissions in the transition. Instead of playing a slower game trying to pass guard and establish control every single point, they're trying to win immediately or throw punches if there's too much stalling. Due to strikes being in the sport, sitting on bottom looking for sweeps isn't a very viable option compared to wrestling up or going to turtle and trying to stand up. With gloves, it becomes a lot more difficult to do the finer points of grappling where you might want to use your fingers, go for collar chokes, or other techniques that you would find in jujitsu. So we've looked at some of their differences, but what about their strengths and weaknesses? What we need to understand about both sports is that they have very different goals. If your goal is to protect yourself or protect somebody else, jujitsu is fine here, but in the real world, strikes exist. If you're not practicing your takedowns and the first thing you want to do is pull guard, you may end up on the wrong side of things. Sure, you may have some great techniques once it gets to the ground, but if you can't get your opponent there, what good is it? This is where Sambo can really shine because they're used to getting an opponent to the ground, staying on top, and then they can throw strikes. However, if we're looking at the sport side of this, we've seen a completely different result. While it's crazy to think that a Sambo guy would do great in a Jiu Jitsu rule set, people still love to see this match happen. One FC has been famous for showing off these matches with the Ruotola brothers taking on famous Sambo athletes. And every time it happens, Jiu Jitsu comes out on top because the ground game is far more focused as we don't need to worry about strikes. With the perfect rule set for Jiu Jitsu, you're always going to see the Jiu Jitsu guy come out on top assuming they're of similar skill level. And this is why you never see Sambo guys win ADCC. It's not the right rule set for them. 
On the opposite side of the coin, what happens when jujitsu guys don't have their best rules? Traditionally, when doing MMA, jujitsu guys do fine, but it's not nearly as competitive compared to how Sambal athletes perform in MMA. Once the world saw everything that Hoist Gracie could do, the list of champions that only did jujitsu quickly vanished. There are a lot more Gracies that tried MMA and they didn't have the same success. Even athletes like Damian Maia, who have incredible jiu-jitsu, never rose to the rank of champion. The same can't be said about ensemble athletes. With guys like Fedor having a monumental streak at heavyweight and being one of the best world champions, and other athletes such as Khabib rising through the ranks and completely crushing their opponents while pioneering for ensemble at the same time. Sambal athletes overall have a much better result when it comes to MMA and being able to use more assets from their sports, such as strikes. So in conclusion, both Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Sambo are highly effective grappling martial arts with their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Jiu-Jitsu is known for its ground fighting submissions while looking for control, while Sambo opens the doors to striking and grappling at the same time. Depending on what the rule set is or what you want to be good at, both sports are a great choice. If you're looking for pure grappling, Jiu-Jitsu is going to win this one. It is a deeper focus on all the ground systems while not needing to worry about getting hit in the face, but Sambo is the better art if you're looking to combine everything together. But if you're looking for some new jiu-jitsu gear, make sure to check out Gold. Gold has excellent clothing, bags, rash guards, and even wipes if you need to find a stylish way to finish your opponent off. Use my link below and by ordering something from their website, you'll get wipes for free with any purchase.